<clears throat> Hello, Andre Fort. I'm going to tell a little story here. It might be a little long. I don't know. This is for uh, Jesse at Blaze the Machine. He wanted to hear a little bit more about me growing up and stuff I'd done with my brothers or whatever. Um, <clears throat> I don't remember a whole lot. Um, also, I'm trying to talk a little louder because I've, I've had a couple of people say that they can't hardly hear me. Um, so let me know if you notice anything where you can't hear me very good. Okay. Most of my time <clears throat> when I was younger, I spent with my older brother, Wayne. Um, he was fun to hang around with. You know, um, he was ornery, though. He, he could be a little mean to me. Um, um, there was, uh, he just got through doing something, probably giving me a, a Snuggie, which is um, back then, and I don't know if he just made it up or what, but um, some people might call him a wedgie. But, uh, I mean, when I was a kid, I walked around in my underwear sometimes. <laughs> um, but uh, he uh, he would come behind me, and he would grab me by the back of my underwear and pick me up which, you know, your whole underwear just go up into your butt crack, and then he, he'd pick me up, man. I, my, I could just hear my, my underwear just ripping, just... <laughs> and I, he'd let me down, and I'd pull him out, and I'd go run into my mom. Mom, Wayne gave me a Snuggie. And my mom would go, Wayne? Well, she would say, Dairy Wayne, stop doing that. <laughs> um... He did that all the time. I probably, I, I probably went through two or three underwear a month. <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, but he did, <laughs> he did that a lot. So um, I wanted to get revenge somehow because um, he made me mad. Well, he, you know, my older brothers always had me fill, fix them stuff you know cereal you know sandwiches <clears throat> and i didn't mind i thought it was fun and uh, i just like you know helping you know but um wayne says fix me a bowl of cereal i said okay so i fixed him a bowl of cereal i uh i took a little ball bearing a little some people call them steelies um it was you know it was small. It was smaller, like a little bit bigger than a BB, you know. Um, trying to find a good example. Yeah. Uh, here's a pen. This is a pen too, but I don't know. that's not a good good example. Anyway, a little ball bearing. I took the ball berry and I put it in his cereal. And uh, <clears throat> after I gave him the bowl of cereal, I went and hid because I was scared. <laughs> I went and hid behind the couch and uh, I waited. And uh, <laughs> I heard him, I heard him, uh, <clears throat> then he goes, Jerry! And I was like, oh crap. Where are you? And he'd come looking for me. Um, I could hear things, you know, being pulled out, you know, uh, furniture and stuff. Finally <laughs> found me. Yeah, he pulled me out, and uh, I don't remember what he did. He probably gave me a Snuggie. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I, he says, about broke my tooth off. Uh, she, I, I, I bring that up all the time to him about that. But, um, yeah, there was that. <clears throat> um, let's see. Uh, those guys, Wayne and my, some of my older brothers too, and then their friends um, in Iowa. <clears throat> I don't know if they did it so much in Colorado, but when they were when we were younger in Iowa, we get some you know pretty heavy pretty heavy snow, and um, <clears throat> the streets were covered with snow, and uh, 
the cars would be, you know, driving around in it. Well, these guys would do what they called bumper hitching. They would, you know, they'd go and they'd grab the back of a, of a bumper of a car going by and they would, you know, hold on and they'd just slide following these cars, you know. Um, and for the most part, people would just let them do it. You know, they weren't hurting anything, you know. Um, I don't remember hearing anything about that they stopped abruptly because you know, they were mad or got out and said, get off my car or anything like that, you know. But uh, that was just a common thing in, in Iowa. Um, we're going to go bumper hitching today. I guess it was a way to get around town, you know, or whatever. <clears throat> you know, and there's coming, you know, around the corner or whatever, and they come to a part where, they wanted to, you know, go a different way, and the car was going a different way. They just let go and go on, you know. But uh, that was uh, that was thing. That was something back in the seventies. <clears throat> um, when I was a real little kid in Iowa, um, down the street from where from where we lived, there was a man that had a um, a record service old junkyard full of cars, you know, and stuff. I'd, I'd always go down there and just kind of mess around, you know, walk around, get into some of the cars, you know, and just play. And uh, one day I come, I, I went up to his wrecker. And, um, of course, the man wasn't out there. But uh, I, I went in, I tried the doorknob, and it was unlocked. So I got in there. Well, in the ignition was, uh, was some keys. So I, excuse me. I got the keys, and uh, I took them. I took them home. <clears throat> so uh, I um, I remember the guy's I remembered the guy's name when I was a kid. But I don't remember what it is right now. But uh, I think we were I think we were we were like eating dinner or something, and we heard a knock at the door, and. Um, Or maybe it wasn't too long after that 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 he came to our house and uh, heard a knock at the door and they said, "Hey, Joe," or whatever. Um, and when I heard his name, I was like, "Uh oh!" So I went and ran and hid underneath the bed. <clears throat> so my 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 dad come in and Jerry, where are you? And uh, found me underneath the bed. And uh, <clears throat> he uh, he says, "Did you take Joe's keys?" I said, "Yeah." He's like, "Well, where are they?" In my room. So they went and got them, and they made me apologize for taking them. And he didn't. He it was not not that big a deal. He got them back, you know. But I just being a kid, you know. Um, I don't. I don't even know if I knew what I took. You know, it's just, <clears throat> just adolescence, you know, just, um, Wayne and I, uh, we, we always like, he, he's the one that taught me how to do this, but we always shot rubber bands and, uh, what he'd always have a, uh, a sack or something of, uh, of little plastic army men <clears throat> and we'd stand them up. And uh, we'd get rubber bands and just, you know, put them on the edge of my finger. I would just aim that finger, pew, shoot them like that. That's how he taught me to do it. And uh, I got pretty good. We got pretty accurate with them. And we'd set them all up, you know, on shelves and stuff. And pew, shoot them off the, shoot them off there real good and stuff. And uh, <laughs> it was fun. I'd always ask Wayne, hey, Wayne, you want to go shoot rubber bands? Or you want to go shoot, shoot little army men? And we'd, uh, yeah, we'd do that. Um, we hung out a lot. Um, yeah, there, when we lived in Estes Park, Colorado, <clears throat> the, uh, the boys, my older brothers, they made a big old pile of snow out in the backyard. I mean, I mean it's probably about, probably about five foot high. And they dug it out, made an igloo in there. It was really cool. Um, let's see. So that's about all that. Um, 
we uh, in Estes Park, we um, I was I was pretty small. Um, they raised rabbits, and uh, they had some little white ones, you know, little white bunnies, and uh, they had a a couple of um, of Saint Bernards. One's name they, they named him uh, Dyke, um, and the other one's name was. Um, duke or something like that but um one day i went out the back door and i looked on the porch and there was a white a, a, a white animal laying there on the porch in the snow and it was a little i, I didn't know what it was the way its ears were back and uh, i went i was crying and i went told my mom mom there's a baby lamb there's a there's a dead baby lamb on the back porch and she came to the door and looked and it was a she says no that's a little that's a little rabbit she says um the dogs must have got a hold of it or something I was, when i was a kid i was very sensitive about seeing dead animals you know i um my uh my whole family when we're going down the road if they saw it, like there was a dead animal coming up they'd say a dead animal come out and get Jerry's attention away from the because I'd start crying when I saw the dead animal um so uh <laughs> that's just the way I was um I still don't like seeing dead animals on the road you know got hit by a car especially dogs and cats I hate seeing those um squirrels are just stupid you know they just <laughs> I hate seeing them too but um they just they run out in front of you Anyway, um, let's see. <clears throat> um, hold that one. Let's see. I've told this story before. Um, in Iowa, we had this huge house, two-story, two-story house, and my brothers they'd have their friends over and they'd party all night you know um drinking and they get wasted and uh, <clears throat> me being you know six years old six seven years old i uh i was always curious i went upstairs opened the door we always had box fans going you know Boom, couldn't hear anything these guys they were just, i mean a bunch of hippies you know <laughs> Uh, um, they was laying all over the floor everywhere. I mean, there's, they were mostly in their, you know, their jeans or if not in their jeans, you know, they laying around their underwear or whatever. Um, their jeans were laying beside them. And I would, I'd come in there tiptoeing, looking at everybody. I'd get a wallet, open it up, look in there. You know, see what's in there. Look at their pictures of their girlfriends. And then I'd put it back away, you know, and go to the next one. Like nobody ever woke up, you know. But, uh, yeah, I was always curious. So curious one time. My brother and his, I think two of his friends, one's Tim and Tom, I think. Um, this, old, this old house that, that we lived in, I think it was really old. It had one of those... It had, um, you know, the keyholes were, were huge for like the old skeleton keys. So they were big enough you could you could see through it, you know. I was looking through it <clears throat> and those holes are so big that if you're standing over there, you can see somebody looking in, you know. So Tim, he, uh, they're talking and he sees me. I didn't know he saw me. And he did this, I still don't know how he done it, but it was gross. He took some spit and took it on his finger like this, like that. And he goes, pow, like that. And it hit that keyhole and went right in my eye. I was like, ah, you know, and they started laughing. And uh, <laughs> I guess he taught me for, you know, peeking in there, didn't he? Um, <clears throat> let's see. All right. Um, let me tell one more. I probably better end it there. It's getting long here. Um, 
growing up at the dinner table, okay, my dad was a little bit strict or picky about, you know, table etiquette. Um, I, I grew up whistling, okay? I whistle all the time, whistle to all kinds of, you know, to, I whistle the songs, I whistle the music, you know? Um, and I've been doing it since I was really little. But uh, I would whistle at the dinner table. My dad would say, don't whistle at the table. Stop whistling. And I would stop. And I'd forget. He'd say, Jerry, I said, don't whistle at the table. Okay. And then, um, you know, if your drink was beside your plate, let's say, say like this. If your drink was right, right here beside your plate, he would, he would take your drink and he would put it at the top because he, he's afraid that, you know, I'm eating, I'm gonna you know, knock it over or something, you know? So he did, he, he put the drink, your drink at the top of the table. Um, so uh, he just, he was just really picky about that kind of stuff. If you don't, if you didn't put the shampoo lid back on tight or something, he would tell you about it. Um, just stuff like that. Um, very big on washing your hands. Wash your hands after you use the restroom. Uh, wash your hands before you come to the table to eat. Uh, well, I think that's really about it. Um, Jesse, I hope, I hope uh, this was entertaining for you. He wanted me to you know, talk about um, times that we pranked people or anything like that. Didn't really, I don't remember getting in on any of that kind of stuff. If I think of anything, I'll I'll try to write it down or something. Or I might talk to Wayne about it or something. But as of right now, I don't remember doing anything like that. But uh, there you go. Sorry it's so long here. Um, hope you all enjoyed it. Um, and, uh, we'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.